Good morning, everybody. I'm going to do a quick reading because I'm heading out onto the lake. The water is, I'll, I'll show you guys through my window. The water's like glass. Oops, it's a little blurry, sorry. And um, it's uh, going to get hot again today. So before it gets too hot, I want to get out on the water. And I thought, okay, let's just do a video reading. I know it took forever to get the other one to upload yesterday, but um, I'm hopefully... Um, Going to move through this a little bit quicker than I did yesterday. Okay, the first message we have. I don't even know how you pronounce that. Arakura? Arakura. You know, I should have looked that up and, and, and tried to figure out what, what nationality that is. Arakura. It sounds pretty though, doesn't it? Anyway, blossoming. Ooh, how pretty. Do you know what? I have never looked up close at this card. Isn't that terrible? I've all, it's a white iris and the girl coming out of the center. That's beautiful. I, I grew up in Canada, and <clears throat> I, it, it's interesting because when you first look at it, I suppose somebody might think that it's a, a different kind of flower, but that's an iris. I know irises. We, I always had uh, blue irises in my yard. So a white iris, and she comes from the center. Um, and you know what? As I'm iris meaning, hold on. While I'm talking to you guys, I'm going to pull this up because... I know that there's a message in this for us um, as well. You know, I always do this kind of thing. Uh, whenever I see something, sorry, <laughs> I was using my computer. Um, whenever I see something or, or I, I get a, um, you know, a pull, I, I look up immediately what it means uh, because that's how spirit speaks to me. So the meaning of the iris flower and I'm looking at it again, and yes, this absolutely is an iris. I'm looking at a blue one. Um, but the iris is associated with royalty, um, is the first thing. It talks about royalty, faith, wisdom, hope, and valor. Ooh, I love that. And it comes from the Greek goddess, Iris. Oh, well, there we go. And um, how wonderful. She was a messenger to the gods who was thought to use the rainbow as... Um, as the flower as actually flowing the multicolored robes of iris oh i love it um and then others believe that the multicolored flowers were part of the robe of her flowing flowing veil from her dress so we see this white one that's interesting um symbolisms from the iris um talks about um leading um they would lay them at the at graves of women that would uh, uh, have iris lead their loved ones to the you know, to spirit, back to spirit, back to heaven. Um, in France, they were used um, to symbolize royalty and power, which is the fleur de lis. We all know the fleur de lis that uh, people, well, you should. <laughs> and then the United States, it's the, it's the birth flower for February. Oh, wow, big chills on my body. Um, it's also the 25th wedding anniversary state for Tennessee. Tennessee. That's funny. Um, so hold on, the bearded iris. Oh my, more messages to me because you can see the little beard <laughs> at the front here. It falls down. It's kind of fuzzy. Um, it, it also represents, um, this is where they, the, um, they reproduce their roots. God, there's so many messages in this. Um, the bearded iris is, um, it looks like a potato uh, tube, a tuber. And when you pull them up, they, they, they kind of clump together in these bulbs. Um, and they're like, as I said, they're typically royal blue or purple, which is what I always saw them as. Um, and they're, refer they're referred to as the blue flags. Um, and people use them in, in bouquets. But the white one represents purity and innocence. And I love that. Okay, so there we go. The roots of the plant have been used to help um, skin infections, stomach problems, um, even syphilis. Um, used to help treat asthma and bronchitis. Um, it's a diuretic. Um, it helps to treat dandruff. How funny. The fragrance is used in perfumes. Um, and I ha um, let's see. Uh, herbal remedies in potpourri. Okay. So that's, that's what we're going to do. We're, I, I had to look that up. There, there's a lot of meanings for this for me. So the bearded iris speaks of purity. So the message for this is you're just getting started. So have patience with yourself and the process and don't give up. So here we see she's just blossoming. Things are just coming, you know, coming about at this point. So in like many ways, we're like this flower that's opening. 
Um, and, and maybe this, maybe you're at the place where you're not quite open yet. You're a bud that's just about to bloom. You're, you're in this blooming. So they're telling you not to rush the process. It's part of your path that you're in. Um, it's about learning new skills and knowledge, taking time to gather ideas. They want you to nur uh, nourish your body um, as, a, as you would a flower, right? A flower needs plenty of fresh air and water and sunshine to grow. Um, and so do you. And they need, uh, you know, if you feed your flowers, uh, plant food they grow strong and and so what they're saying is if you take care of your body nurture your body which is what I'm about to do go outside in the fresh air before it gets too hot get a little exercise on the water um, and they're saying soon you'll get a signal that you're you're you know it's time to put your growth into action again so they're wanting you to spend your time amongst flowers possibly work with flower essences at this time um, interesting I saw three doves fly above just before I started this and three, coming full circle completion, also speaking about an ascended master being with you. Um, but the dove represents slowing down, right? And taking a breath. Um, so with this as well, slow down, you know, don't be so hard on your body, have a little bit of patience with the situation. As, as I said, get involved with, you know, flower essences, but it talks about um, keeping the faith. Um, things are, are moving along as they're meant to. It's okay, just relax, have a little fun. Take care of yourself. Nourish your time yourself if you're in a little bit of downtime right now. The number three is specifically is the Ascended Masters are helping you, usually the one that you feel closest to, um, whoever that might be for you. So who do we have? Jesus, Kuan Yin, a saint, um, or some other spiritual person or figure. Do we have Archangel Michael, Metatron, uh, Raphael? Who is it that comes to you at this time? Okay, so that's that message. I know I'm going, I'm, I'm taking longer than I thought I would. I always do that. But I like the green Terra that comes next. Green Terra, um, we'll, we'll just look at the at the message first. Green Terra is, is the garden, the garden girl, the color of your heart, the color of fresh new growth, the color of spring. Um, I like that. And she's very peaceful. Look at, she's got her flower sitting there. She's in her own position. She's relaxing like we were just told to do, right? So what the message is, is start delegating. You don't have to do everything, right? They're asking you to help others. Um, Ask others to help you, including her. She's saying, call on her, Green Tara. Um, instead of trying to do everything by yourself, you don't have to be Wonder, Wonder Woman or Superman, right? We have to take care of ourselves. We're just, things are blossoming. Things are, are we're, we're in transition. Um, we're blooming. And we need, in order to get to the place where we can grow healthy, according to Green Tara, which is coming from Gaia, from nature, <clears throat> we have to take care of ourselves. So we can't be workaholics, Sherry. <laughs> we can't be doing everything ourselves, you know? And, and what now is basically what they're saying is, <clears throat> you might be carrying more of your share of the load than you're meant to. And when you do take on more than you, than you are able to, you start to feel resentment or, you're, or, or worn down. You get, you know, you lose your temper, you get worn out. Look what happened in my body. I just got shot because I was just doing too much. So one of the reasons that she looks so peaceful is that she's able to ask. She knows, this, she knows that to be productive, she doesn't have to struggle, right? She's clear. She's focused. She's in a meditative state. So that's another good thing to do, meditation. Clear your mind. Um, you know, the shortest way to get to where you want to get is, is by doing it in a peaceful, um, smooth manner. If your mind is clear and focused, you don't get things in your way. When you're, when you're muddled down, you're not able to think straight, and, and you, get, you hit blockages. You create your own blockages. So the shortest route, route to triumph is, is peaceful, calm, take care of yourself, slow, steady pace, um, you know, meditate, figure out where you want to go so that your mind is clear and you don't have any indecisiveness. Once you figure out where it is that you want to go, then everything else should fall into place. So she's telling you she, at this moment, maybe it'd be a good idea for you to sit quietly <clears throat> And pay attention to what your mind is saying. Be open to what your heart is saying. Because as, as I said, this is the color of your heart chakra. I don't need to hold this out. See, why don't I just allow myself to rest? Same, same message for me. Oh my gosh. Let's try to zoom out a little bit. There we go. Um, so, okay. So sit quietly. Be open to what your heart is telling you. Um, it's going to lead you to what's most important for you. And everything's just going to fall into place. So... Um, other meanings that come specifically for this, which are funny, is you don't have to be or don't try to be Superman or Superwoman. And nobody expects you to be. I just posted a song, um, and it's, it's to my twin. 
And it's to me, because my twin is me. And the song is by Coldplay, I love it. It's called Something Just Like This. And it's basically saying, I'm not looking for, you know, Superman or Wonder Woman, you know? You've been reading books of old, legends and myths, Achilles and his gold, Hercules and his gifts, Spider-Man's control and Batman with his fists. And clearly I don't see myself upon that list. So there's somebody who is trying to be something that they just can't make it up to, or they feel that that's what's expected of them. And then the answer back is, where do you want to go? How much do you want to risk? I'm not looking for somebody with those superhuman gifts. I'm just looking for, you know, I'm not looking for a fairy tale bliss, just somebody that I can turn to, somebody that I can kiss, somebody that I can miss. So we're not asking for anybody to go outside of themselves, outside of what more, more than they can give. Sorry, I get emotional. I'm not asking for that. So I don't want to ask that for myself. We just want to ask us to do the best that we can do, right? Of ourselves and of others, and that's good enough. And that's what she's saying. It's also saying, you know, start delegating. Give other people chores to do. Give kids chores to do. Ask your partner for help. Yesterday, you know, I've been strong for my twin, and I thought, you know, I'm asking for his help too. You know, I need help too. And it's okay to ask for help. You don't have to be Superman or Superwoman. You don't have to be the one that's strong all the time. That's why you have partners. That's why you have a twin soul. That's why we have spirit. That's why we have our parents. That's why we have family members that are there. Everybody has a part to play, right? Everybody, delegate authority. You have people that work for you. You don't have to do everything. Get somebody else in work to step up and do some of the jobs. Ask your partner for some help, you know, and then accept the offers when they come. Accept assistance when it's there. You know, I used to, I'm such a clean freak and I, and I like things done just a certain way. I want things, you know, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. And so I'd ask the kids to do something and of course, you know, they half ass do it and it wasn't done. So I'd redo it myself. But it's like resist that temptation because I, I would wear myself out and I was exhausted and I was angry. And it was like, you know what? My mom did that to me too. And that was a pattern. And it was like, it's time to stop that. It's not going to have to be perfect all the time. Your house doesn't have to always be perfect. I'm going to go out on the lake before my bed's made today because I had to do this reading for you guys first and I never leave my room before my bed's made but it's like you know it's gonna get hot I so sometimes you're you're gonna have to leave your house but it's not done sometimes it's not gonna be you know just so the happiest house aren't houses aren't always the cleanest houses you know the happiest houses are where people play and they have fun and they have love so Delegate authority. It doesn't have to be perfect. When people do help, when your kids try and help, when your partner tries to help, and maybe they don't do it as great as you might have done it, but you know what? It's good enough. It's okay for right now, right? And release any guilt or belief that it's weak to ask for help. They want you to be a team player. I love that song. We're on each other's team. Love that song. And if we're on each other's team, we're team players. Team players don't expect everybody to do everything you know, each person takes their part. Not one person is expected to do everything. There's the running back, there's the fullback, there's the quarterback, right? There's the kicker. Everybody has a specific person, perfect, per purpose. You can't be doing all of, the, all of the roles yourself. So now we're moving on to Mary Magdalene. I love this one. Now, unconditional love. Coming again, here we have the colors of the heart. And she's got such a serene, beautiful face and I love unconditional love. Unconditional love doesn't expect anything. It just comes to you unconditionally, right? It's just given unconditionally. So the message is love yourself, others, and every situation, no matter what the outward appearances might be. I also get a different message from this card that no matter what the outward appearance at this time, there is unconditional love. Trust what your heart is saying. There is unconditional love in this situation. And what she is saying is, she's not what most people think she is. And she doesn't want to have to defend herself. Because if she has to defend herself, she's going to sink down to a lower level than she's comfortable with. So I'm getting this message again that has something to do with yesterday's message. That there is a very loving person, a very gentle, kind and loving person that is has been portrayed in a negative light. And she or he is saying, you know what, I don't need to defend myself. I know who I am. I'm a good person. I am unconditionally loving. I give of myself. And if I worry about others gossiping about me and I, and I feel like I need to defend myself, I'm, I'm lowering myself to that level. That's what the message we got yesterday. Remember the queen who saw the situation clearly 
and she might have gotten frustrated, but she's going to look at the situation with humor and she's going to be like, look, you know what? I'm not going to get involved in this drama. Just like that horse that was going out over her, his or her emotional waters. I'm not going to get caught up in the drama because whoever is doing all of this, if I get caught up in the drama, I'm sinking down to your level. So that's what she's saying here. I'm, I'm, I unconditionally love. I've got busy, busier things to do, more important things to do. I'm not going to get caught up in the drama. I'm not going to worry about defending myself because karma comes around and it all comes out in the end. And you know what? My reputation or who I am should speak for itself. And if you don't see me for who I am, then you don't see. So that's the message here. She is basically saying she chooses to reside in a peaceful place. And anyone that's bickering or judging or the chaos, that's below her. That's beneath her. You are beneath me. I don't need to fight with this. Right? The most good can be done where she is, in a space of love and where she can give of herself that way. And she advises that you do the same. She wants you to um, follow her example and come from a higher level of consciousness. Because what is the message? What would love do? It's always the message. What would love do? We get upset. It's okay we get upset. We get tired. We get frustrated with people. We lose our temper. You know, none of us are perfect. But... We always can come back down and we come back around and we ask ourselves once we settle our settle our mind settle our heart what would love do what is love saying and that's where she wants you to dwell that's where she wants you to reside that's where she wants you to focus your thoughts on the good things that you can do to help people and the good that you can find in people and rise above all appearances this also makes me um, personal message here the bearded iris <laughs> chilling out things are not as they appear things are blossoming start don't be such a workaholic it, it's all coming together you don't have to do it all you don't have to be wonder woman or superman allow the love to come to you give the love out but also allow yourself to receive remember delegating you have to be receptive um and no matter how the circumstance or the overall things if, as, a, as a message just going across the board you know what you're in a process things are blossoming things are looking really really good don't worry about it relax no matter how it might feel or look on the outside there is unconditional love here and things are going very well everything's going to be fine wonderful message all right you guys peace love and light i'm going to hit the lake bye